Hello, guys. Um, today, we'll cover discussing um, topics such as undo and uh, redo. And also, we'll cover discussing the difference between file save and save as. Okay, so when working with Excel, sometimes, um, as you can see from the screen, sometimes you'll make a mistake. I know even I do, right? And from time to time, we've got a real life saving feature available and it's called undo. And it has a partner called redo. So imagine I'm a new user of Excel and uh, for whatever reason, I decided to get this sales, this, uh, I mean, this sales highlighted and I want to get rid of the word sales. Well, I don't really have to do that. I could type over it, but I'm thinking it's the only cell there. If I press delete, I should it get rid of the word sales. It looks different than the other ones to the right though. So I press delete and oops, well, I realized I don't want to do that. So what do we do? Two different ways, no? There is a keystroke shortcut, control plus Z. I could press that now. Also, at the top of the screen, in the quick access toolbar, um, you'll have an undo button. So it looks like a counterclockwise arrow. And when you slide over it, you'll see the word undo and the followed by the action that was taken mo um, most recently, right? So it says undo, clear. Uh, and then the keystroke shortcut, so I'll click it. Okay, if you undo more than what you wanted to undo, the category to the right here is called redo. As it labels itself, it um, so it falls onto that category. No, I just undid the clear. And then what I just undid falls into this category of redo. The keystroke shortcut for the redo, as you can see, is control plus Y. Well, now, as it turns out, I wanted in the end to keep so that I'll press control Z or that undo arrow at the top of the screen. So once again, it's really a handy feature, right? Mm, although it works for most of the commands, however, it does not work for every single command, no? One category of commands is, uh, well, that you cannot undo relate to the sheet tab. So if you can see down below, there is this, um, if we can recall in the past videos, this is the label for the sheet, undo dash redo. Um, now you might uh, not, some of you may not even be familiar yet, but at the bottom of the screen, you can see right through it. If I right click on the current worksheet, which is labeled undo redo, well, I could uh, delete the entire sheet and similarly, I cannot undo that. Well, we have here rename and I can't really undo it, but I cannot come back, can come back and change the name. So. This, 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 this sort of things don't fall under the category of actions that we can click undo. Okay, hope that was clear. And uh, we can certainly take other actions not to in effect come back to the same place that we want to come back to. So it's really a valuable feature once again. And no question, there will be times we make mistakes and um, use the undo button. And to another extent, redo. Uh, it's the same case. They are also really valuable. There could be one example too where you might create, for example, might like to create a chart that looks a certain way. Well, you change the chart and you might want to bound, kind of bounce back and forth between different setups. And sometimes in that case, you toggle between control Z and control Y. Or you could use this those buttons as well up top on the quick access toolbar. Yeah, but no, once again, no question. This is a feature you'll definitely probably use widely in Excel. Now up next is using save or save as. So when you start using Excel, you're likely to um, uh, see a screen something like this. And if you choose blank workbook, 
you'll have a blank workbook. It's likely to have a name like book one, as we see here, sometimes book two, book three, and so on. And if you create other workbooks later, now I'm going to put um, a minimal amount of data here. I'll type in sales right here. Then expenses, then profits. And right here, I'll put in January. And drag it across to the right. Let's zoom it a little bit. Now, periodically, when you look in Excel, you need to save your work. Um, well, let's get to the numbers later. If there is, however, in the middle of your work and there's a power failure right now, or if I accidentally turn off the my computer and I've got to do this all over again, and what if I had filled in a lot of numbers here already and formulas as well, and it's a lot bigger um, and I haven't saved at all. And when it comes time to save though, you go to the file tab, and there are two commands that you see here. So which one really should we use? Save or save as? If there's any doubt at all about which command to use, always use save as. I'll use it here. But when you're saving for the first time, it makes no difference um, which one because they both will take you for to the same location, no? When you go to the save as, your screen might look something like this. And again, there could be some differences. I'm going to click browse. One of the things you are concerned it is when we save a file is where we are uh, saving it. No? Okay. Is it on a flash drive? Is it on a hard drive? Is it on a network somewhere? Those kinds of things. We need to give it a name. Well, book one isn't really that descriptive, right? So you can put in another name. Um, well, you can. You need to stay away from most of the special characters. And um, dash, well, dash and underline, they certainly work, but not slash, asterisk, things like that. So we'll give it an appropriate name. Maybe call this 2020 sales report, sales report. Oops. And you can have spaces in the name as well too. Well, occasionally you might need to save this in a different format. I click the drop down, the drop arrow to the right of where we see the Excel workbook. Now there could be scenarios where um, you need to save your file in a format that is readable by someone who has an older version of Excel. So, this, this this list falls into that um, um, consideration. Now, occasionally, um, well, where we want to save it again, screens will look different and it might go into this folder or that to the desktop or documents. Um, it's, and it's okay, you can scroll up and down to see different locations as to where you might want to save the file. You, well, we've, we've already given it a name then we click save and that name appears at the top of the screen. Well, suppose we put in some more numbers in here and that we need to save. So for example, what we really mean is most of the time after saving a file for the first time, it's simply update. Well, we don't really see that term in the menu, but we can go to file, save, and simply do that. Automatically, this is updated. And slightly faster is the icon on the side of the quick access toolbar, save up here. Okay, and notice it has a keystroke shortcut, control S. If you've got lots of data on your screen and you click that, there will probably be a slight pause and then you'll see an indicator at the bottom of the screen down below. Um, and then the file is saved. So most of the time after saving a file for the first time and that we are not trying to change its location or its name, well, we must use 
file save there. But anytime we need any of those other changes, either to the location or name of the file or the file type even, on that note, we used file save as 